Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thanks to God. Welcome to today's service. It's such a blessing to have this opportunity to come and speak life, hope, inspiration to you on this beautiful and marvelous day that the Lord has made for us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. For he is the King of glory, the Lord of hosts, strong and mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Such a wonderful time of worship with you all this morning. And let us continue with that spirit of worship as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word of God today. And today I'd like to bring you a message entitled, The Fullness of a Life in Christ. The Fullness of a Life in Christ. And we're going to be using as a foundational text today for our message the scripture from John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10 will be our foundational scripture for today's message entitled, The Fullness of a Life in Christ. I want you to say that with me, children of God. The fullness of a life in Christ. Hallelujah. And so again, saints, we gather here to explore the profound and transformative theme of the fullness of a life in Christ. And I want you to know that this concept is not just an abstract theological idea, but a practical reality that can and should shape our daily lives. So our journey today will be guided by the words of Jesus found in John 10.10, 10, where he declares, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Let us get a word of prayer in this morning. Thanks to God. Father, we bless you. We come before your presence today with humbleness, with thanksgiving, with adoration, with worship and praise in our hearts and minds. We honor and exalt you, Lord God, above the heavens and the earth, for you alone are worthy of all the praise, all the honor and glory. I thank you for the gathering of the saints right now. I thank you for those who are gathered in the nations, Father, that you will touch, that you will heal, that you will save, and that you will deliver. Even now, as your word goes forth, bring forth the manifestation of your glory, O God, in the midst of your people that they may experience the fullness of a life in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints of God. Again, I welcome you to today's service where we will be talking about the fullness of a life in Christ. I've given you the foundational text for this week's message, which again is John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So who is the they that Jesus was referring to in this text? Then he was talking about those who believe in the name and his name, those who have placed their faith in him, those who have surrendered their lives to him, those who seek to follow and to serve him. They, that they, those ones that I just described to you, that they may have life. And it is my prayer on this day that you are part of the they that Jesus is speaking of in this text. And if indeed you have surrendered your life to Jesus, then Jesus was speaking this message to you. And the Holy Spirit is again reminding you of the life that Jesus came to give you. Somebody say hallelujah. So let's talk about understanding the fullness of a life in Christ. We see several things that Jesus outlined that will manifest in the lives of those who follow after him. He talked about abundant life, that we may have life, not only life, but have it more abundantly. So let's see how abundant life should be defined for the believer today. We see that when Jesus speaks of abundant life, he isn't referring to material wealth or the absence of struggles, but rather he speaks of a deep, rich, 
and fulfilling life that is rooted in him. And this life, saints of God, is characterized by joy, peace, love, and purpose. For it is these qualities that transcend our external circumstances. Nothing can take away the joy of the Lord that he has given us. He has given us his peace. He's given us his love. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's given us purpose. So in spite of what may go on in your external situations and your life situations, you know that you have been endowed with peace, joy, love, and you have purpose in this life. So that is the first way that Jesus was speaking of the abundant life that he has given us. Second, we look at the source of the abundant life. If you were to take note of John chapter 15, verse 5, you'll see where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Saints, in this scripture, we see that the fullness of life comes from a close, intimate relationship with Jesus. Not attending worship services, not going to church, but having a close, intimate relationship with Jesus. Because it is his life flowing through us that produces true abundance. Hallelujah. A second thing we need to really grasp in order to understand what it is to have the fullness of a life in Christ is that we must know how to live in the fullness of Christ. And one of the first things we need to learn how to do in order to enjoy this fullness of a life in Christ is we need to learn how to walk in the spirit. You see, children of God, in order to experience the fullness of life in Christ, we must walk in the spirit. We'll see that the Apostle Paul talked about this in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23 where he tells us about the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, children, these are the hallmarks of a life lived in step with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is my prayer that each of you desire to live in step with the Holy Spirit so that you can experience the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, generous, and self-control in your life. And that it may be on display for others to see. Hallelujah. A second thing that we need to be able to understand about living in the fullness of Christ is embracing our identity in Christ. Here we see in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, where it reminds us that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This speaks directly to the purpose that we have when we're living in the fullness of Christ. You see, understanding our identity in Christ empowers us to live out our God-given purpose. You see, we are not defined by our past mistakes or present circumstances, but by our relationship with Jesus. Someone say with me, the life of fullness in Christ. A third thing that we need to embrace about living in the fullness of Christ is how to cultivate a life of worship and gratitude. Children of God, you see a heart full of gratitude and worship is a heart that recognizes the fullness of life in Christ. 
we see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, where Paul exhorts us to rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And saints, when we focus on God's goodness and faithfulness, our perspective shifts and we begin to experience life more abundantly. Hallelujah. A third phase of this experience that we should have as we live in the fullness of Christ is that we should be able to share the fullness of Christ with others. And the first way we have been destined to do so is by being salt and light in the earth. We see in Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16 where Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You see, children of God, our lives transformed by Christ should naturally flow and draw others unto him. And as we live out the fullness of life in Christ, we become a living testimony of his grace and his love. A second aspect of sharing the fullness of Christ is engaging in acts of service and compassion. You see, children of God, this is not just going through the motions, but it is living in the fullness of Christ that compels us to serve others, just as Christ did. We see in Matthew 25, verses 35 through 40, that Jesus teaches, whatever we do for the least of these, we do for him. We need to understand that our acts of service and compassion are tangible expressions of the abundant life we have in Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. And the third way that we can share the fullness of Christ with others is through the sharing of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ his, and his kingdom. So as we look at this final aspect of the fullness of the life of Christ, we know that there is something that we are called to share. And that is the good news. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, Jesus gives us what is commonly referred to as the Great Commission, where he says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We see a very clear directive given by Jesus, and it is up to us to embrace his message by sharing the good news of Jesus, because this is the ultimate way to spread the fullness of the life that we have received. So in conclusion today, saints of God, we're talking about the fullness of a life in Christ. We need to understand that it is a gift and a calling. It is a life marked by intimacy with Jesus, the fruit of the spirit, a sense of purpose, worship, gratitude, service, and a commitment to sharing the gospel. And so as we meditate upon today's message, let us seek to live out this fullness by allowing the life of Christ to overflow from us into the world around us. May we be vessels of his love, joy, and peace, drawing others into the abundant life that only he can provide. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. 
You've been listening to Seed Time and Harvest with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned in to today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.